Good afternoon crafters, we are live. My name is Hannah Oxbury and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts and this afternoon we are going to be having a little fun with a Facebook Live demonstration featuring the Peace and Quiet Die collection. Now what we're going to do, as we always do with these Facebook Lives, is give it a little bit of time just so everyone who wants to join us live can find us and do so. Essentially this afternoon is all about you guys, so if you've got any questions as we go through the demonstration, please, please, please do type them up in the comments and I will do my level best to answer as many queries as we go along. Essentially these Facebook Lives um, are just a little way, A, of interacting with you guys and uh, having a little bit of fun to keep me entertained whilst I'm <laughs> at home, um, but also to bring you extra long demonstrations because quite often when we are on air, myself and Carla at Create and Craft, we don't have all the time in the world to bring you really detailed demonstrations. So it's, it's these kind of little luxury times that we can find of an afternoon to spend with you guys going through how to build a full car. We've got a few people joining us already. Good afternoon to Steph. Good afternoon to Pam and Lorraine and Linda as well. Lots of lovely people joining us. So thank you guys. Um, Sandra says hello from sunny Cardiff. Do you know what? It's not sunny here. I don't know whether you guys can hear it, but it is bucketing it down <laughs> at the moment. But you know what? Secretly, I know we shouldn't say this because I know on every Facebook Live for the last like three months or whatever, I've been saying, oh my goodness, it's so cold, it's so cold. I have been secretly glad of a little bit of rain today because it was getting rather hot for a while. Uh, Judith is here. She says, hope you're feeling well. I am Judith. Thank you very much. I hope you are too. Christine's here too, as well as Angela. Lots of people here already. So Peace and Quiet is a dye collection that launched on Create and Craft on the start of April. It's actually a really special collection for me because it's one of the first collections I didn't do on air, um, obviously with the impending babies and all sorts of things going on at the time. Um, I just I just obviously couldn't go to the shows to do them. So Carla, Carla launched this one and uh, took you through the demonstrations with Peace and Quiet. Um, but it's nice because it means I get to play on Facebook Live with it later on, which is what we're doing this afternoon. It's a really lovely collection. It features at its heart this beautiful uh, dream house, if you like, sort of a, a plant house, a hot house, a pagoda. It can be used in so many ways. It's beautiful, beautiful card shape. And we'll be showing you how to use that in an easel card design. A whole host of flowers, as you've come to know with Carnation Crafts, it's what we do best at the heart of our collections are flowers. And of course, that little bit of humour as well. So there's things like a lawnmower, there's things like a little mouse sliding into a wheelbarrow, there's a water pump, all sorts of little die sets within there to allow you to create stories on your card designs. Do you know what? Also quite masculine designs as well. Now it's one of the things we get asked for quite a lot, which is, is male orientated collections. And rather than going all out and doing this is for a guy, I think Carnation do collections so wonderfully whereby it could be for either or. Um, and Peace and Quiet definitely is one of those. Uh, let's see who else we've got joining us this afternoon. Fiona's here as well as Joan, Therese is here as well, it's Helen, Humberta is here from Herod Island, thank you Humberta, Humberta always joins us, such a pleasure to have your company this afternoon Humberta, uh, Joyce says yes it's raining in London, there we go, <laughs> uh, Viv says glad to see you, I almost forgot the time, do you know what I almost did as well, I've been a little bit distracted with a certain launch coming up next week, so uh, yeah almost, almost forgot the time as well there Viv, but we're here and we made it and that's no trouble at all, uh, Vera says, having to watch on my phone as won't start my laptop. Oh, I'm not sure on that one. Um, luckily, I mean, with all these Facebook lines, what we do is we always upload them afterwards. So you can watch them again at your leisure. They're there for a little bit of resource. They are there just as a little helping hand and they are there. So you've got something to refer back to as well. Um, so as we go through, I'm going to turn the camera around in just a moment. As we go through, if you've got any queries as we start making, please do let me know and I will do my level best to answer, as I always do. But if you guys are familiar with these Facebook Lives, you'll know I'm pretty rubbish at working the camera and talking and thinking and demoing and everything like that all at the same time, so do bear with me. Let's have a flip round of this camera and here we are. We've got our card base ready to go. Now, with Carnation Crafts, when it comes to making card bases, it's one of two ways. Either you cut the outermost layer from your die once, and that gives you your full card base. 
like in um, Perfectly Peaceful uh, Arrow Fold card, for example, or indeed into Spring, uh, the Z Fold fancy card there as well. Or you have a slightly different approach, which is like we're doing with this one for Peace and Quiet, which is where you cut two bases, okay? So you take your outermost die, the largest die in the pack, it's always the largest die, and you cut two halves, one for the back of the card, and one for the front of the card. That will give you your card shape. Now, you can score down the back of your card, perhaps down the side here, attach that to the front, give it a little shuffle, and that would give you a side opening little card like so. When you're creating card bases, what we recommend is a nice heavy sort of construction weight card, which would be about 350 GSM. I use the Perfect Smooth, from Carnation Crafts because it's a nice heavyweight cardstock, but it's also got this lovely smooth finish as well. Now you notice with my card for this demonstration, we're doing something a little bit different. We're not necessarily doing the side fold or indeed the tent fold. We're gonna go easel with this one because again, it's one of the queries we get a lot, sort of more concept cards, more dynamic shapes. How do we achieve those? So same as before, we've cut two halves, one for the back of the card, which I've already um, stuck some of the uh, backing papers Onto. This is a lovely sort of green colour with a few of the florals that feature within the Peace and Quiet collection and a lovely amount of sort of a distressed look to it as well, a little bit of script in there, a little bit of texture. That is a free download available from carnationcrafts.co.uk. Just hit downloads followed by free downloads. Click on whichever collection you are working with. In this case, it's Peace and Quiet. Have a little scroll down and you'll find all the different downloads available there. Now, for the top of the card, something a little bit different. We have again cut it from the outermost die, but this time around we've scored just at the top, just somewhere where it makes sense. So here I've chosen to score between the two points of the sort of, um, what would you call those sort of finishing little turrets there? And then roughly halfway along the card as well. And this is gonna create our easel mechanism for the card shape. You'll see, if I fold back that little score on that little turret roof there, we've got a little bit of red liner tape to stick this top half to the bottom half. And we're just gonna shuffle that card into place, make sure it's lined up all the way along. Use your pokey tool to remove the little uh, carrier sheet on the red liner tape and fold down, just making sure we've got that straight, like so to stick the front of the card to the back of the card, okay? So that will give us, if we wanted it, a tent fold card, okay? I probably might, if I was gonna make a tent fold with this, bring that score line just a little bit further down, gives you a little bit more stability when you're opening it up. But because we're making an easel, we have scored along the middle. You'll see, when we come to open, you get this lovely mechanism, this lovely pop-out effect. To make that work so we can build card design to the top of it, we have taken another section of that same outermost die, so the largest die in the pack there, cut it again and again from 350 uh, GSM Perfect Smooth. I'm gonna stick that to the top of the card. Now you'll notice this time around the red liner tape's on the front of the card, but it is only on the bottom half of that score, okay? Reason being, if we try to stick it all down, that little pop-up's not gonna work. We're gonna stick just one edge in place first. So I'm using my hand, I'm holding that top edge in. We can then hands-free open that back and remove the two other strips. The reason we are removing one before we go on to the others, if you try to remove all the carrier sheet all at once, you're gonna find yourself in a bit of a pickle. It just gives you a little bit more control and it means you can get the top of the card placed perfectly before you add the security of the rest of the red liner tape. So little score line, remember, score line to the middle makes that mechanism work. We've just got the red liner tape below the score line, not above, to ensure it continues to work. And we smooth that down into place. That means now when we come to open our card, you get this really lovely dramatic pop-up effect from the front, okay? 
Um, Jeanette says, hi Anna, I need to catch up um, as I only just managed to log on. I hope everyone is safe and well. Jeanette, that's no trouble at all. We always um, upload the videos afterwards to watch back at your leisure. Also, Jenny has said here, trouble finding you, hope you're well. We always do the Facebook Live demonstrations on our brand page, which is where you've hopefully found us now. Um, just a little note on that, we always do set sort of show reminders in the events pages to let you know when we've got upcoming uh, Facebook Lives and things like that. So by all means, join the little um, events on that and it will always give you a reminder of where we're going to be live as well. Now, I've noticed I've got a few little sticky marks on the front of my card. Sorry, I'll get my head out of the way so you can actually see. Um, these are probably from me being a little bit overzealous with my glue in an earlier uh, demonstration. So I'm just using um, a, a sticky eraser. Um, I don't know what, what the craft name is. I know it from art being like a cow gum eraser, rubber sort of thing. And they, these I use quite a lot actually because you can just rub them over the surface gently and if you have got any little sticky bits any errant areas of sticky it will take those off it kind of collects on the rubber itself so you can just pick those away and then keep your rubber refreshed each time keep your eraser refreshed it also removes sort of any any marks and things if there's sort of surface marks and things it will it will help with that but it's just a little tip and um, as I say I, I don't know what the name of it is in craft but as a as as an art rubber it's it's a cow gum eraser and that just, just picks up any sticky. So if you have got anything where you've sort of splodged your glue or like me, put it down in some glue. Once the glue is dry, sort of tacky, you can erase that off with a little rubber as well. Okay, so we've got our little pop-up mechanism. Now, I'm kind of deciding where do I go first? Do I go inside, do I go outside? It's just one of those things. I think we're gonna go outside first. Yeah, let's go outside first. And then we can start enjoying sort of putting this card together. Now, what we've done here with our mats and layers is cut them from what we call our perfect papers and they are colour matched cardstock to match in exactly with the colours of the vignettes, okay? So if I lay the vignettes over the top, you'll see everything's kind of tonal, everything then works together. When we start talking about the vignettes and things, these are our coloured artworks that are available to download for free from carnationcrafts.co.uk. The original colourways are always free and they allow you to be able to print them off, uh, lay your dies over the top, cut them out and get the same beautiful artwork that we work with as you see us in demonstration. Um, there are other videos uh, included within the page um, where you can watch how to cut your vignettes as well. So the first matte layer, we always work down in size and I do tend to normally work down in colour as well. So I'm starting with this darkest colour and we've gone super, super thick with the foam on this one. A little homage to our Carla Bagshaw. She likes nice, super thick foam on her cards to give a nice chunky finish. All we're going to do is we're going to remove the tape uh, carrier from the two sides. We're going to leave the middle without the tape um, cover taken away because that's going to act as your support. So over to one side, just lining that up. And as we always do, we're gonna hold that in place with one hand. Sorry, my head, I'm not being very good today. Let me move that camera a little bit. <laughs> um, that little sort of fold back on the carrier sheet that I've done for the tape allows me to just gently place without having to stick anything, gently remove the carrier sheet and smooth into place. That just ensures each and every time we're getting a nice straight stick on everything. Okay, so everything there matches up, everything lines up beautifully. Remember, we're just sticking those two sides. That central piece of foam that we popped in the middle is there just to support the middle as well. Uh, <laughs> Margaret. Um, Margaret says, hello Hannah, has just been struggling to get a duvet in its case. Yeah, oh my goodness, I know that kind of struggle. Uh, do you know what, I think duvet cases and things are beyond me at the minute. Poor Simon has to do most of that sort of thing now. Um, but yeah, you do feel, you kind of get lost in them, don't you? They, they are all encompassing. Um, Therese says, where do you get your rubber from? Uh, do you know what, Therese, I've had it that long, I really don't know. Probably um, on one of those sites that is named after a rainforest. It might be worth checking that out back. <laughs> um, I will pop links up as far as I can, sort of an ingredients list uh, once we are finished on the demonstration as well. So you can watch back and obviously, if you want to replicate the card, you've got everything information wise you would need. Our next layer, our next matte and layer that goes on, remember we're stepping down in color. So we're going with this sort of dusky pink 
almost sort of bordering on a lilac kind of finish there. And uh, I've used foam tape again, but this time around it's just one mil. So nice thin foam tape. Just give a little bit of height, a little bit of drop shadow. And once again, folding over a little bit of foam tape carrier sheet before I stick in place, leaving that central one just as the support to the centrally card. It just means you've got this nice firm support in the middle of your design. Um, let's just have a look. Humberta says, I simply know it's a glue eraser, easy to find even on uh, even Amazon carries them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do you know what, Humberta? I could have made it so much easier by saying glue eraser, but the words just escaped me, as most things do at the moment. Um, uh, Liz says, love the idea of doing an easel card with this collection. Well, that's handy, Liz, because that is what we're going to be doing. And hopefully I can see some of your designs in group if you've made making along. Um, would also love how to do the trifold Janine made uh, for a sample, if possible. Uh, Liz, it's, it's possible we are limited with time <laughs> before I go off. So it might be it might be something I can do perhaps when I come back. Um, but yeah, certainly if you've got any requests like that, if there's any videos you want to see, um, we do have a requests uh, post up in face, um, our Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, that you're more than welcome to add your requests to. Um, and quite often, you know, a lot of these things that you guys request on a regular basis, it's something we, we fit into the demonstrations. And of course, we do have the video list online for you guys to refer back to as well and watch all the different videos back at your leisure. Now, this is where this card starts to get a little bit fun. It's adding in the texture. It's adding in all that beautiful filigree detail. So one of the dyes included within the Dreamhouse uh, die set is this beautiful uh, pagoda sort of filigree design. Absolutely perfect for adding in a little bit of detail. Uh, also lovely in its own right. You know, imagine this uh, for a wedding card cut from pearlescent cardstock. Perhaps you're going to have a bride and groom facing each other within the center of this card, this aperture to the center. There's lots and lots of ways of using this. Perhaps you want to go a little bit more vintage and you want to go with like a distressed cardstock or cardstock with a distressed ink on. You can make it quite um, sort of rusty looking, for example. That would be a lot of fun as well. In this case, we are using one of our Perfect Blush papers. This is the Perfect Blush in the rose, so a little bit of hint of a pink. So it's a white cardstock with a little hint of colour. And what I'm doing is just, because I want a nice flat adhesion between this layer and the layers underneath, I'm just using just white glue on this and of course my famous glue applicator just to pop the glue into little areas. Okay, so you've got plenty of little areas you can pop the glue within this card shape. But being able to use the applicator just to get the glue exactly where you want it, just make this whole process a little bit neater as well. So once we've got our glue in place, we're just going to line that up. You see how with Carnation, all of the mats and layers beautifully hug and frame and detail one another, giving you this very, very sophisticated look to your card designs. And then I'm just going all the way around and just tapping that down gently with my fingers just to make sure that glue is sticking that perfect blush card stock to the perfect papers below. And you can see how we're starting to build this beautiful, beautiful, even like um, Arboretum, think Kew Gardens, think um, sort of Victorian structures and things like that, hot houses where they used to grow sort of fancy flowers, orangeries, for example. Lots and lots of ways of using this beautiful, beautiful card design. Um, <laughs> lots of love for the erasers. I'm loving it, guys. Yeah, these little tips and tricks, because obviously, you know, when we're on air, we, we don't often <laughs> get around to disclosing everything we use. So it's nice to be able to do so on a video. But yeah, that, that little eraser goes with me everywhere. To the centre of that beautiful aperture, we're going to add in further mats and layers. Remember, these are all from that card shape die set. And this time around, we're using finger lift tape just to stick that in place. But you'll notice, like we do with most of our demonstrations, everything is colour matched, okay? So we've got the purple running into the lilac, running into the sort of creamy blush colour. For these mats and layers, we're repeating that process. So it gives you this sense of cohesion. It gives you this sense that everything matches purple into the more lilac-y colour into that blush as well. 
just need to gently lift one side and remove the other carrier sheet for the finger lift tape. So both sides are nice and stuck. Now what's lovely about having these extra mats and layers, I have used them just to add in dimension, just to add in and fill the space. However, if you wanted to be creating a really beautiful cutaway look, you could use these inner mats and layers as apertures so you could cut into the card and have that sort of perspective going back so you could look into the card and discover even more delights behind the filigree there if you're looking for aperture videos again carla has done a really wonderful aperture video um, available from the video list over on the facebook group carnation crafters um let's have a look jan says i love your battle scars Jan is a very dear friend of mine and Jan knows full well that will be from an argument with Morphe cat so Morphe is, is my ragdoll cat who has the most wonderful little personality but he does have a very strong sense of where he wants to sit and where no one else is allowed to sit so yes I do have a few battle scars from doing battles with Morphe Jan <laughs> Okay, so we've got our design built, the basis, if you like, all the backing papers ready to go on this wonderful little card shape here. Now's the fun part. This is my favourite part. I love the construction, don't get me wrong. It's really fun building that card design, but actually introducing the look and the vignettes and the colour and the story into the card itself is just something I love so, so much. And I know you guys really, really enjoy building the fronts of your cards as well. So we're going to go in with a few of these florals and they're going to be training up the side of our plant house here, our dream house here. Overlap them, snip into them, add into them, really build them to give you this wonderful flourish down one side. Think about sort of breaking free. Perhaps you're one of those crafters who always has to make everything um, symmetrical and things like that. This is an ideal way to sort of test yourself a little bit because it's really fun to add in a little bit of uh, dimension. Carla's just joined us. She says, hey up woman with lots of love hearts. It is wonderful to have your company this afternoon, Carla. I hope you're keeping well. Uh, Jan says, Morph is a fluffy demon. Yes, he is. He is. He is quite simply a fluffy little demon, but we love him very, very much. So each time we have one of our vignettes, remember this is our coloured artwork that we refer to throughout the shows. These are downloads, okay? They are available from carnationcrafts.co.uk. You just simply click on downloads followed by free downloads. And from that point, you can then filter by collection. So for these ones, you would find them under Peace and Quiet. Um, print them off. Again, we do have printing guides online. We do have videos online on how to do that. Um, you add the vignette to your basket, you take it through checkout and a link will pop up saying download now to download your vignettes. If you have logged in or created an account and logged in, your vignettes are always available for you via the My Accounts section of our Facebook, um, of our website as well, which is super, super handy. So you don't have to worry about saving them to your computer or anything like that. Um, but you do need to log in to use that, that function, that searchability. Um, when you are printing, um, when you're using the vignettes, we do recommend using Adobe Reader. It's a free to download PDF software. Um, it gives you far more control over how you print your vignettes. And it also ensures that it doesn't shrink them because sometimes things like um, Chrome or Edge or the internet browsers that you could automatically open your PDFs in and shrink them. So they're not gonna be the right size for your dies. When you do print, always select actual size or 100%, not fit to page or borderless or anything similar like that because they will. you want them in the right size. Being actual size ensures they will be the right size for your printouts, okay? You see here what I'm doing? as we've been chatting, is just adding in a little bit of shape to those florals. Normally, obviously, I would shape each layer as we go. I've already decoupaged these up ready, but just giving those leaves a little bit of a turn over my pokey tool brings them to life. Adding in a little bit of a balling from the ball tool on a foam mat, um, bringing those petals up, bringing those leaves up, gives you this sense of reality. Rather than sticking anything flat to your card, it brings these flowers to life. Let's just add in. And then add in 
a little bit of balling. So I'm bringing those honeysuckle sort of fronds, if you like, those, those tall slim petals for just by balling them off with a large ball tool against the foam there as well. So that's all of my florals shaped. Much, much easier obviously to shape uh, before we stick. And for these, I'm quite happy for them to hang over the edge. Again, we're going quite super with this card. So this would be something I would make for a gift box with rather than a little envelope or anything like that. So it's quite fine for the little die cuts to hang over the edge. And we're gonna go in with what we uh, use, Pin Flare Glue Gel, which is a three-dimensional glue gel, which gives you height and lift to your designs, but it also allows you a little bit of wiggle room. So we can go in and stick and then adjust depending on whether our design shifts about at all as well. So first up, the little trumpet flowers in there just stuck with pin flare. And then honeysuckle just layered over the top. Now you see how I'm doing this. I'm laying the die cuts down and just positioning them. So anything where we have an end is hidden behind another little flower, okay? That way, by positioning them, overlapping them, overlaying them, it gives you this look of continuality. It gives you this look like you've got a beautiful flow of stem, of florals, of designs. Nothing then is harsh and it doesn't distract the eye at all. In nature, obviously everything um, overlaps and tumbles over one another anyway. So you are just literally replicating what you would see in nature with those designs. Again, a little bit of glue, just in a few areas to lift that die cut up and then we are just positioning that like so to get that wonderful trailing effect okay again a little bit over the edge on the bottom that's fine because we're using quite a broad um area for the designs there as well okay each time i place something i'm just going to lift the card up to make sure it's still sitting properly and also it still works in line with the sort of vision i have for this card if you like just tap those down so we know they are stuck as well. Lots and lots of love coming in for Carla's recent demos here. Viv says, loved all your recent demos, Carla. Um, oh, I oh, Carla says, I'm late because Wheeler and I were being told off for laughing too much. Do you know what, you two? I don't think there's any case of laughing too much. You guys are brilliant on air and it's just so much fun watching you. Lots and lots of people here agreeing. Um, Joyce says, always good show with the laughing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Jenny says, laughter is healing and joyful. Yeah, do you know what? It really is good for the soul, isn't it, Jenny? That is lovely. I think for the bottom of this card, we're going to go in and we might overlap. We might add in another set of flowers, but I'm going to save that just because I know I'm building quite a few layers on this one. It might be something we come back to. On the other side of our little card, we're going to have our beautiful water pump in our bucket but again I want to be building a scene behind it I want it almost to look a little bit like um this is overgrown like it's one of these sort of Victorian um houses that's been lost to the wilds for a little while and then been rediscovered so you've got this beautiful emergence of nature going in the background so I'm going to have things like those toadstools in the background you see how now rather than just placing the water pump on you've got more going on more texture in the background there as well this can then be developed further perhaps with mushrooms or, or toadstools in the front as well and then we can snip into these because remember you're not limited with carnation you can snip into these as many times as you'd like add in take away it's totally up to you, you don't have to use the die cut in its entirety now we're kind of happy with placement. Again, I'm going to give those mushrooms a little bit of a balling just on the cups of the mushrooms themselves. And you'll notice each time I'm turning over the die cuts, we have all of the same colour on the reverse as what you would have seen on the front. And that is because we use what we call mirrored vignettes. In each download, we have mirrored vignettes. So you've got the artwork on the back. You also have standard vignettes if you prefer to use those or you don't need to see the backs. Because we add in quite a lot of height and dimension to your um, to the card designs that we create, um, it is quite often you do see the backs of the, of the design because you've lifted this layer up. So you're not going to see any white areas 
if you're using the mirrored vignettes. It also means when you're doing things like balling the back of them, you've got an idea of where to place. If you are using these for over the edge cards or um, acetate cards, for example, where you're going to see the reverse, it's ideal because it just takes away all those little white areas and finishes the items beautifully. So those little toadstools, I've just snipped away a couple here. I'm lining them up with the bottom of the steps, if you like, from the filigree there and just using a little bit of pin flare just to hold those in place. OK, they are my background. So I haven't balled them out too much. I haven't added too much pin flare to them. It's just simply to stick them in place because over the top, we're going to go in with our water pump. Now, I'm going to snip our little birdie away. Birdie's going to go into um, our stash, either for another project or he may well end up being included on this one. Just pop you to one side. And then we're going to take our scissors and follow the cut line details on the rim of this little bucket here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and join the two cut line details. You see how we did that? Same again on the other side. Taking my scissors, just snipping into it nice and gently to open that bucket out because our little mouse is going to be taking a little bath in there. We just needed to release those little pips to allow ourselves to slot him in there. Same as you've just seen me do, we're going to ball this out, but we're going to use a different size ball tool. So again, so a slightly smaller one, just run that down the middle and the edge and then onto an even smaller just to get that fine detail in the handle and things like that as well. Again, it's all the same as what we've been saying all the way through the video. Adding that shape, adding that dimension gives you a little bit of lift. It gives you a more realistic look. Bucket, same thing again. We're just going to round that out, working with the large size and then just finishing with a medium size there as well. OK. Let's then just line that up. Yeah, that's looking good. So again, pinfla glue gel. Because we're building in this height, we're building in this dimension. But again, we don't need to go too mad with it. It's just in areas to hold that design in place. Like so. Over the top of those mushrooms. Same with our little mouse. Again, turning him over. He's such a happy little chappy, isn't he? Just balling out his tummy and his ears to give him a little bit of shape and we're just going to slip him into that bucket there okay you see what i've done i've slipped him in then we're going to go in with the pin flare to glue him into place just gently so you don't get your glue everywhere okay but it just means you can get nice exact positioning before you commit to that sticking down as well Oh, he looks so happy in his little bucket, doesn't he? <laughs> so cute. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Mandy's just asked, uh, do any of the USBs use the mirror vignettes? No, we haven't got mirrored vignettes on all, any of the USBs, Mandy. Um, if you did want to try, you could, in theory, depending on your print settings, uh, flip the image so mirror the image yourself when you come to print your vignette from your usb um and then on your scan and cut or cutting machine whichever one you happen to be using as long as it reads an svg file you could then um just use a flip um and then rotate tool as well just to flip the svg file too uh tina says i think a fairy would look nice as well yeah this would be a great color it's, it's, it's that sort of finding this design at the bottom of the garden sort of thing isn't it it's just gorgeous Gives me also just have a little sip because despite the rain it is still very warm in here <laughs> okay so for the other side we're going to snip into these mushrooms um, and use these so you get this sort of tie in to the both sides it's something you'll see me do um, a lot when it comes to designing card shapes is this sort of mirroring this kind of repeating this process whereby you use something in one area and then you repeat it in another, okay? It just gives you this sense of balance in your designs, I would guess. But again, we're going into that vignette, just trimming it away, 
and then lining up over the florals. Remember, don't ever be afraid to uh, layer up over things. It gives it a much more natural look. It also gives whoever's receiving this card uh, the really fun task of finding what's going on in it as well. So ball tools, again, remember shaping out those little cups, the mushrooms. You see, I'm doing a little bit more shaping than what we did on the ones in the background behind the pump because these are more in the foreground. These are more proud and more prominent there as well. So into those cups, we're going to just pop in a little bit of pin flare glue gel. If you do prefer using foam pads, absolutely same process. Please feel free to do so. Uh, pin flare is just my, my go-to because it, is, uh, it gives you that wiggle room. I get a little bit intimidated by foam pads because you, you get that sort of one chance stick and then, you, and then you're done, aren't you, with them? So just sticking our little mushrooms into place there. And I am also going to use just a few in the foreground as well because I think that ties in nicely and gives you again this sense of this overgrow this this sense of detailing in the background of the design plus we're using all the little off cuts and things from the other shapes that we have designed so we're just rounding that little uh, grass area off from where we snipped away from the other side and it's just taking that time that attention to detail to round anything off where you've trimmed to include as well and this time around because we're using smaller mushrooms Again, going in with your smaller ball tools there as well. Uh, whenever we're using little little areas of vignettes and die cuts, do consider a little pair of tweezers. Um, you'll see I'm not having to clamp the tweezers shut. They are um, one of those that you, know, you, you have to press to open and that just gives you a little bit more helping hand when it comes to placing. And these are going to sit along the front of the bucket there, creeping over the edge of the card and, of course, over the edge of the water pump there as well. And you see how you're building this kind of layering system. I'm just going to squidge my flowers up a little bit because that leaf is a little bit distracting coming out the bottom of the card. It's all about grounding. So when we say grounding, it's lining up. The bottom of things with the bottom of the card but it's also lining up things with the bottom of each other as well i don't know how much sense that makes <laughs> so whereas before we had the light leaf hanging down here i've just nudged it up a little bit and brought those little uh, mushrooms over so now everything's sitting at the same level which makes a little bit more sense when you view the card because it means everything is at the same level in the foreground as well. So it gives you this finish. You haven't got anything sort of a jarring edge at the bottom, which looks like a mistake or anything like that. Um, Jenny's made a very good point there as well. Jenny says a foam pads can dry out too. Yes, absolutely, Jenny, they can do so. So yeah, sometimes it is better to, to stick with your glues and things as well. Uh, Dorothy says, hi all, bit late arriving, but my visitors have gone now. Well, Jenny, uh, Dorothy, sorry, that's absolutely fine. You just be, keep saying, you can always watch back another date. Uh, Karen is watching at work. I probably shouldn't have said Karen's name out loud. <laughs> sorry, Karen. She says she has the volume low though, which is probably good. Um, Mandy says, thanks, Hannah. I've been trying to resize mirrored uh, vignettes unsuccessfully. Uh, well, we do have um, videos, Mandy, as we said, on how to print and cut your vignettes as well. So it's well worth checking back in that. Linda says, red hot in County Durham. Goodness me. That's, um, yeah, it's, it's luckily cool, cool, but still quite warm here. <laughs> okay, so I'm not quite done with these. Um, I still want a few... A few more little bits, you know, little little finishing touches in the foreground here. So I think we're going to go in with a few of these little um, daisy flowers just to tie in the design. And again, you see me sort of using the mirrored vignettes. You know, I can turn these over if I wish to. And you've got then the option to use either one side or flip them over and have the mirror on the reverse as well. So same thing again, as we always keep saying, all tool in. Shake those florals, tweezers on, just to help me glue in place those little little daisies there, a little bit of pin flare. I'm never too precious when it comes to um, sticking flowers and, and things like that because it's nice to have them um, coming off the front of the card as well, should you wish. And let's have a few daisies the other way. So this time around, flipping it over so we're using the mirrored version. 
bringing those petals up like so and then gluing in place as well just to fill that little gap and almost bring this sense of the eye in to our mouse. We're kind of framing our mouse with almost like little brackets, that is, isn't it? Really, really sweet little front to the card there. Um, let's just now open. So the inside of the card, I'm going to open it fully because obviously we've got glue and things drying to the front and I don't want to squidge it on the work surface. But we also need to design something on the inside of the card for a little bit of fun too, to work as a stopper. So rather than going with just a traditional stopper, which would be, you know, something like your lawnmower stuck. So when you, you open your card, it would be butting up against the lawnmower. I thought it would be fun to include a mini easel on the inside for the lawnmower. So the lawnmower can also stand up and become part of the outside of the card whilst working as a stopper as well. So to do that, the process is exactly the same. So it doesn't matter whether you're working on a full card base to create an easel, or you're working with just an individual die cut to create an easel, the process is the same. So you'll see, we've got the first matten layer cut. This is the matten layer for the lawnmower there. And once again, you've got your score at the top with your red liner tape on the back to attach it to the card. Then you have your score along the middle to give you your little pop-up effect, okay? So when that pops up, when the card comes forward, it's gonna catch alongside that little lawnmower there and your lawnmower is gonna be your stopper, okay? So we're just gonna position it. We're gonna work out on the inside of the card where we want that to sit, probably just down to one side like so. I'm gonna hold that in place. Again, it's from Construction Weight Cards, this matte and layer for the easel on the inside of the card has been cut from 350 GSM Perfect Smooth. And I'm just eyeballing that to make sure this, this fold, this score line along the center is straight and parallel with the bottom of the card there as well, okay? Removing the carrier sheet from the red liner tape making sure again i'm holding everything in place so it doesn't shift about just oh come off <laughs> does anyone else find talking to them really does help <laughs> sticking that down like so and removing the excess okay so that gives us our stopper to the inside of the card it's a subtle one but you see when we start to open up the card it's going to work really beautifully to the inside uh, Lorraine has asked, what do you glue the mirrored vignettes with? If you want to use the mirrored vignettes with them on the back and you want to give them lots and lots of shape, like you see me doing the demonstrations, I use a spray adhesive. I think I've got some next to me. Let's have a look. Yes, I do. Here we are. So once I have cut and folded down the black line to the centre of the mirrored vignettes, I then um, open it up again, spray this to one side of the paper, uh, wait a few seconds and then fold. Okay, so this is sprayed after folding, but before cutting is the easiest way to do it. Obviously spray it in like an area, I use an old cardboard box as my little spray booth, um, just to stop all the sticky flying everywhere all over my desk. Um, but uh, there are other options out there as well. So, because, as we said, the inside easel is exactly the same as the outside easel, we now need to stick another matte and layer, remember how we did with card shape, to the bottom of our easel mechanism. So once again, cut from that same matte and layer size, 350 GSM white cardstock, nice construction white cardstock. And we're going to go in, grab a little corner of that red liner tape. I'm using my pokey tool to get underneath the carrier sheet of the red liner tape to give me that little pull tab. Removing one area of the carrier sheet before turning and removing the rest, like so. And that just provides, provides as I've said, red liner tape and a strong adhesive tape for the layers, like so. Ooh, that's sticky hands. <laughs> so when we open our little lawnmower, it will now catch 
the front and the back of the card. So you're bringing in a foreground, okay? This is a really great way to instantly interject a wonderful sense of perspective to your cards because that shape, obviously when the person views the front of the card, is gonna be in front of all of the rest of the easel card there as well. So let's go in and add in our vignette. So this is our lawnmower. I've used a little bit of foam tape on this one just because I'm curving round and it's that central part that's gonna be stuck onto the mats and layers like so. And then the little handles here, again, this is where our little glue applicators come into play because we can get right in to the handles just with our glue applicators there, the very tip of the glue applicators. And it allows us to stick those two handles in place as well. So you've got the front of the lawnmower where we pop the um, foam, the front here sort of curved, going back to the handles which have been glued to the background of the design. We're going to go in with a few little flowers. Again, think about ways to tie in the front of the card to the inside of the card as well. So here we've got the little daisies that were featured just in brackets, if you like, at the top of the card. Having them on the inside as well just tells that story. So again, remember, anything we place down, we are shaping before we stick. Um, but this time around, rather than pin flare, I'm going to go in with my wet glue, my white glue, and stick these to the front of the lawnmower as well. And this idea, this sense of tying everything together just works so beautifully with the design. Those, do I stick, do I not? Let's leave those just for a minute. Now, obviously, because we've popped a stopper on the inside of the card, you also need a, a mini stopper for opening that easel. Okay, so the front is gonna come down. That easel is gonna stand up, but you also need a stopper for this easel as well. So what you can do, Whenever you place your stopper for the inside easel, this time I'm using You Are A Cut Above as the sentiment, but that will also work as a stopper to hold that mini easel open as well, okay? So this time around, same colours as what I've used in the background there, this time around with the green, because we're going with the green from the uh, backing papers, and a little bit of foam, so it's raised from the background. That creates your mini stopper to the inside of the card which means when you come to the outside, that is all in place for your stopper as well. And that looks really, really pretty. Now I'm just sort of eyeballing that. Do I want some more little uh, daisies and things just around the sentiment? Yeah, I think, do you know what I actually do? Because then you've got that nice sort of mirroring for the design. So always take a look back once you've opened up your card, once you're finished with your design, have a little refresh, have a little look, see if there's anything more you want to add to it. Remember, you've got all the die cuts there and the vignettes ready to go. So you can absolutely add in detailing like so, just to tie everything together as well. And that finishes our peace and quiet card as well. A um, couple of people saying there's a weird echo from Hannah's voice or is it my sigh? I'm really sorry guys, I think the video, I think we're struggling a little bit with uh, signal today, so it might be just uh, blurring the, the video a little bit, so so sorry about that, there's unfortunately not much I can do. <laughs> but we will try and make improvements as we go, I'll see if I can do anything my side to, to speed up the internet for future little demonstrations. So let me just turn the camera around, because quite often the speed works a little bit better on that version of the camera, and I can hold up the card then with the two stoppers so you can see the overall look that we have created obviously that um i've got sorry i've got red liner tape on me you've got the lawnmower with that sentiment as your easel to the inside of your easel which is often like a really nice way to display things because it's almost like a little hidden treat and then you have the top of the card as well and do you see how we mean having that easel in the foreground pops that lawnmower in the foreground, which means the rest of the card is in the background, but it all ties together with this same sort of design and storytelling look. Because we've used those mirrored vignettes, you haven't got any white bits showing, 
And of course you could go to town if you wanted to create even more apertures, even more layers, you can absolutely do that so as well. Uh, a couple of people saying um, there's no problem with the sound there. And so, yeah, it might just be one of those things with the internet here. So apologies for that, everyone. Hopefully it's not distracting you too much and you're still able to follow along with the demonstration. So there's our little card that we have made using the dies from the Peace and Quiet collection. And again, don't forget, quite often with these demonstrations, you don't have to necessarily just use the dies that you've seen me use. You can absolutely use the other collections. It is just a case of following the same process with the easels and things like that and putting your own spin on these as well. I would be absolutely delighted to see your makes and your designs featuring this kind of uh, tutorial over in our Facebook group if you'd like to share them. Uh, the Facebook group is Carnation Crafters and there's lots and lots of friendly people, lots of friendly advice and helpfulness over the, on that page as well. We run competitions and things like that so it's well worth joining too. Now I did promise in group if I was to be persuaded I might share with you um, some little sneaky peeks <laughs> of a collection we might have coming up very soon. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see. Um, lots of love coming in for the card. Thank you guys. That's really, really kind. You know what? It's all on Carnation. They're beautiful designs. Nick, our head of design, his stunning artwork that they create. It is fabulous. Uh, Jeanette says, you make it look so easy, Hannah, uh, and you're so quick. Takes me ages. Well, don't forget, I mean, I have cut all, pre-cut all these, so it would take a little bit longer in, in real life, so to speak. But just take your time with it and go through step by step by step, and I'm sure you two will be able to create really lovely cards using Carnation. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because my comments have just suddenly flooded with, yes, 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 please. I assume that means you guys would like a little sneaky peek of stuff we've got coming up. I can absolutely do that for you. Don't tell anyone though, because I'm quite sure I'm not meant to. But obviously, as you guys have come to realize and know and hear, we have got Christmas launching next week on Create and Craft. And as always, we will absolutely do a full show preview uh, demonstration. It's actually booked online already uh, on Monday at two o'clock here on the brand page as well. So just look in the events page section on our brand page at Carnation Crafts, uh, add yourself to the event and you'll have a reminder of when the show goes live. So you can have a little first look at all the dyes and things like that. But I was really keen just to grab a few cards and just show you Glow of Christmas that launches next week on Creating Craft. Uh, Carla's launching at six o'clock on the 8th, Tuesday the 8th. So an evening show, but we have a whole three hour launch. So plenty of time for demonstrations as well. Here is your first little sneaky peek. So Glow of Christmas is built around this sense of returning home for Christmas. It's built on this sense of the warmth, that family time, that being together aspect. And we have these beautiful frames. Now, as I said, I'm only going to show you a quick sneaky peek, but it's this wonderful sort of heart of the design. So there's three different frames. And then, of course, your, your dye surrounding that, that then can do wonderful things like so, where you've got the beautiful sort of window into um, a beautiful Christmas table in the background there with all your friends and family around celebrating. Or you could use it in reverse and have it a window to the outside as well. Obviously, we've got Father Christmas there as well. Isn't he spectacular? You know, giving him that cheeky little like shh to his lips to say, you know, this is part of the secret. And actually, you know, this is part of a sneak trick because I'm not sure I'm supposed to be showing you for these in an advanced sneaky peek. But you know what? I'm going to. Uh, we mentioned there's a couple of frames. Again, I'm not going to show you them all, but I just wanted to share with you one of the more outside scenes. Remember, we've got indoor and out outside ones as well. This one's the oval frame. I think this is exquisite. It is so, so elegant. The colours are just divine. There's something so comforting. There's something so warm. This glow quite rightly, with the name Glow of Christmas, whereby you've got the traditional Christmas flowers, the poinsettias, the little berries, the buds, everything like that, weaving and interlinked and just laying over one another in this stunning decoupage fashion to create an exquisite frame. Remember, you don't have to use the frames in their entirety. You can snip into them too. And having that wonderful, it's almost like an alpine setting, isn't it? With the mountains in the background, the glow from the windows, the houses, the warmth that it emulates. It's just so pretty. And of course, then the traditional Christmas star there as well. 
you have got i mean i know this is very very quick run through do join us on on monday at two uh for a, for a full look the ability to create really versatile cards so you've seen something quite traditional uh you've seen something a little bit more, more dynamic with the apertures and things like that how about something a little bit more modern you know something like this this one's made by Livinia as well i think the other one was by tina thank you tina where you can repeat the pattern so because you've got the ability to print and cut that vignette artwork as many times as you like, you can create your own designs by layering them up. So here we have Lavinia using those beautiful, warm, cozy, fluffy mittens. You know, the ones that you just slip your hands into and it gives you this instant sense of it's winter. I'm snuggled. I'm warm. I'm with my loved ones. Perhaps I've got some glue vine on the go. You know, perhaps I'm roasting chestnuts on the fire. It's all those wonderful imagery, that wonderful sense of Christmas that comes flooding back when you look at these gorgeous designs. Uh, simply stamped in the middle, you mean the world to me. And of course, having those little Christmas stars in the corners. Yes, there are backing papers as well. So really, really pretty on that. And you have seen this a couple of times as well in the um details sneak peeks we're releasing more promos and things like that this is the card shape for this collection for the glow of christmas again father christmas to the center framed beautifully remember what we were saying about using a few of the florals snipping into those frames using them independently the ornate wreath card shape is Stunning, that great big blousey bow to the front it's almost like you could reach in and stroke the velvet on this card you get that texture you get that glitz you get that glamour the edging of the gold just popping with the colour in those vignettes the highlight where you've got the, the, the light just bouncing off and um, almost like the foiling the beautiful design and that's just all in artwork okay that is just gorgeous that's your card shape as well launching alongside the collection we do have like a little mini collection that works in in conjunction with um, this is very pretty for a really paired back feel, a minimalist Christmas, more of a perhaps a Scandi design. So again, ticking all those boxes, uh, depending on who you're sending to or what you're looking for for your Christmas collection. This is made by Pam. Thank you, Pam. This last card was made by Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. So this is the Wreath Maker. And Pam has used elements from the Wreath Maker, the berries, the roses, the tuckins to create this beautiful card shape. And here is the base of the wreath maker, worked in with Magnus and Maya. This one's created by Living You as well from last year's uh, Christmas Eve collection as well. So you can see if you have invested in previous collections, they are all going to work so beautifully together. And that is just what is magical about Carnation? You're investing, yes, in a collection, but you know, because that artwork is done in-house, because the dies are designed in-house, because each and every single step of the process is all done by our design team, you get this beautiful signature, you get this look, this Carnation look. Absolutely stunning. Now, before anyone from work notices that I've done a sneaky peek, I'm going to pop those to one side. <laughs> Stay tuned to our Facebook page for more details and please do join me on Monday whilst we take a proper look at Glow of Christmas ahead of the launch on Tuesday the 8th at um, 6 o'clock with Carla. Lots of wows, lots of love coming in for the Glow of Christmas collection. Um, Vera says our both new collection is going to be on the show. We are beginning our Christmas, uh, two weeks of Christmas with um, Create and Craft with Glow of Christmas um, and the Wreath, Wreath Maker. Um, it's just the two collections launching this year. Uh, Wreath Maker is a sort of separate die set, so it all works in together. Um, let's just check. Oh yeah, lots of love coming in for the sneaky peeks. Um, Judy's off to rob a bank. <laughs> That's fine, Judy. <laughs> However it works for you, my lovely. Uh, again, as I say, lots and lots of love coming in for the Christmas collections. Um, Tree says, when can I order these direct from Carnation Crafts? Um, we always launch our uh, dies to our website. We are held by an exclusivity with Create Craft. So as soon as that has um, been fulfilled and any extended dispatch orders are fulfilled, uh, it launches to our website. Uh, in pro process is normally two weeks unless we go extended, uh, in which case it's normally around three to four weeks, uh, depending on when the extended dispatches leave. Uh, to be assured of receiving all the most up-to-date information, 
of new launches. Um, you can sign up to our newsletter, which is carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash newsletter. And we will send you out a little uh, detail as and when uh, the new sets become available. We also include like, um, you know, coupons and, and offers and free downloads and stuff like that um, in the newsletter too. Uh, Margaret says, what time on Monday? The Facebook Live is at 2 on Monday afternoon, uh, I believe. Check the events page for that and sign up for it. Morag says, will we be seeing a Christmas USB this year? Um, I'm not sure how much I have to say. <laughs> I never get clearance before I do these things. Um, so all I can say, Therese, is stay tuned to our Facebook and our social pages and consider signing up to the newsletter to receive the very first information on those kind of questions, as always. Uh, all that's left to say is thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It's always lovely to have your company. And we will, well, I will see you on Monday, hopefully, here, um, back with a sneak peek of Glow of Christmas. And Carla will see you on Tuesday evening at six o'clock in the evening when she launches Glow of Christmas on Crayon Craft. So thank you guys and I shall see you later. Bye bye.